Hello chaps and chapesses, and this week we're going to talk about my top 10 GT flies with Kieran Jenkins from Fulling Mill. This week, Kieran has come down from Fulling Mill to chat to us about their fly range. We've had an enormous amount of input on the Fulling Mill fly range for saltwater for the last seven or eight years. Many of the patterns which we have sourced from around the world, we have not been able to find here in the UK. So there had to be a way for our clients to have flies for their trips. So we, um, we've been working in conjunction with Fully Mill for, for this time. So Kieran's come down, he's brought us some of our favorite patterns to look at. And today we're gonna go through my top 10 GT flies. We'll start right at the bottom. We'll start at number 10. Number 10 is my tan brushy profile. So the tan brushy was one of the original GT patterns, first developed from tigerfish flies. Uh, and the big difference between this and the flashy profiles that we had been using before was um, mostly the use of craft fur and spinning the material. So that gives you this lovely big profile and a big bush and brush. And most importantly, these flies don't get trashed on the first time that they get used, which is really important yeah. because GTs just smash the hell out of these things. The tan brushy is a staple pattern. It's one of the most used flies in the Indian Ocean and one that we've come to, uh, to love yeah. very affectionately. It also works through the Indian Ocean yeah. and uh, the Pacific as well for Christmas Island and, yeah. and all of, anywhere you find GTs. Yeah. That's like a, that's a go-to fly. Go-to pattern, nice. It's got a bit of flash in it, lots of movement, it's a great, great fly to start with. So that, that comes in as my, as my number 10. Everybody should have those in their GT selection. Next uh, was a, a fly developed by Wayne Haslew uh, on Alphonse. It's called the Cosmo Critter. Uh, well, when he was working on Alphonse, uh, but he was also guiding down at Cosmolido. So he developed this, uh, the Cosmo Critter. The Cosmo Critter is this wonderful kind of amalgamation of all of those kind of key elements that fish love to hit. So you've got some shrimpy type eyes that mm. stuck out the back. We've got some rubber legs, we've got some flash. Um, again, lots of mobile craft fur and marabou in the underbody. Makes the fly really pulse. And it's kind of a combination of a sort of shrimpy, squiddy type thing. Yeah. So GTs just, just love those. All of these are tied on 6.0 Gamagatsu hooks. Really good, solid hook. Originally the Trey Coombs big game hook. Um, and developed into the SL12. So that's just again another complete staple yeah. pattern. So that goes as my number nine. Let's try and get it in the box. Oh uh, well, it doesn't really matter. Do you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw it over. <laughs> I can't put it back in the box. I'll sort that out later. Next one, uh, which would be number eight on my list, is the, the GT Tan Clouser. Clouser's brilliant fly, used yeah. all over the world. One of the ones which is massively underrated and overlooked for GTs because no one thinks of fishing something that sparse. Right. But where yeah. these really come into their own is when you're fishing on the flats and you're fishing at GTs on the back of rays because the GTs hanging around the rays a bit like permit do yeah. and they're sitting there looking for shrimps, crustaceans and various other bits and pieces which are escaping and fleeing. Yeah. Yeah. So as soon as you chuck that in on the back of the rays, <laughs> smashes yes. it. So it's just a really simple, effective pattern. Again, one of those ones which is weighted, it's got a bit of weight to it, so if you're fishing in, you know, maybe a foot and a half of water, it's really useful to get the fly yeah, down on down top. down there quickly. Yeah. But uh, again, same hook, and uh, I'll throw that one over there because I'm getting used to this. So number seven, number seven, the GT Mullet. The GT Mullet, oh, thank you very much. Glamorous assistant. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> very glamorous, Kieran. Yeah. So the GT Mullet, uh, is a fly devised by James Christmas. Uh, again, it's an Indian Ocean pattern, and the big difference between the GT mullet and, say, an ordinary flashy profile is if you feel inside it, it's actually got a bit of a keel. Right. Which so they, what they do is they put a bit of an epoxy resin on the inside, okay. yeah. and that holds that fly straight up in the water column. Right, yeah. So when it swims, it swims on a dead line. Yeah. And originally, um, this one was one of his flies that he developed from watching mullet flee from GTs around the edge okay. of the atoll. Yeah. So, you know, staked out on his skiff, he'd sit there and he'd watch their behavior. Yeah. He always noticed that they chased these things um, and they were swimming in that vertical position. So that's where he right. came to mimic that. Good. So that's another 
another really good GT, GT mullet. Number six on my list. Now here we're gonna get a bit of flamboyancy going on here, a bit of flaming Lamborghini. So if you could pass me that filthy yeah. red looking thing. Lovely. Now that's got some real flash and color to it. Nothing's gonna miss that. I mean, wow. So this fly was originally tied to mimic liartail grouper and some of the right. small coral trout and various other little orangey red patterns okay. that swim around the coral heads. Yeah, so you see yeah. these amazing greeny blue structures yeah. on the edge of the flat. And you see these wonderfully coloured little mm -hmm. red and orange fish which are swimming around. Yeah. And again, you know, you'll be sitting there watching and suddenly a fish just smashes into them and then disappears off. Yeah. That's why you see so many GTs with sort of scars and cuts okay. on their heads, because they actually just headbutt the coral to hit these the coral. Yeah. So this has been a firm favourite for some time. Um, got some real colour in there, especially, especially good on um, murky water. Hmm. So there's the flaming Lamborghini. Into number five, the Nyap. So the Nyap stands for Not Your Average Popper. This is tied in a black pattern. Fulling Mill recently brought these on instead of the original yeah. white pattern. Mm -hmm. Black just seems to lend itself better to um, a shadow profile. I'm a real fan of the Nyap. Um, as James very kindly pointed out when he developed this, is that even clients can cast this yeah. one. <laughs> it's particularly useful when you're fishing along the surf line, because when you're fishing in up to your waist in water, yeah. and you're fishing the surf edge, yeah, what yeah. tends to happen is when you're fishing with heavier flies, they get stuck on the coral yeah. all the time. Yeah. So if you're fishing with a nyap, what that does is create that water disturbance in the surf and it quite often pulls the fish in in. towards yeah, you. Yeah. So you can really use it as an attractive cool. pattern. If you're going to do a bit of blind fishing as well off the edge, that's also another Drag really them up. great fly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, much easier to fish with than your standard popper because okay. you know, it doesn't have that great big yeah, bucket yeah. on the front and the you're narrowness like, is good casting. casting it and knocking yeah. it around. So it's an easy one to cast, cut mm -hmm. through the wind. So number four is a further development of the brushy fly. It's the black and purple brushy, which is this one here. So black and purple has become a color which is synonymous with GT fishing. It tends to have a better profile than maybe some of the tan flies. In clear water, funnily enough, the black flies show up better. And the black and purple has been a long favorite of mine. I think it sort of almost simulates a bleeding bait fish. Right. Yeah. You've got a little bit of this sort of red tinge and looks like a bit of blood you know a bit of blood in the water is exactly yeah, like. good. yeah so that's the uh the black and purple brushy and i would probably pick that over the top of a tan one to be honest okay. it's just a little bit more visible that's that one then we're on to number three getting closer to my favorite so that is going to be alex rook's mantis shrimp alex does a lot of fishing all around the world as yeah. you know and he is particularly clever when it comes to devising new and peculiar sparkly type yeah. patterns and um, you may have seen in one of my earlier videos I'm a little bit of a fan of rubber <laughs> and I like things with rubber in them anyway I'll stop that now sorry again that's another awesome pattern for fishing off the back of rays yeah so when you get rays mugging around yeah. that is a perfect fly to start right. throwing at GTs yeah and you guys tie this up in two different sizes mm -hmm. now so you've got this smaller one um, which is ideal for blue fins and various other uh, smaller species yeah. and then you've also got a much bigger one which is here in the box which is uh, tied on a 6-0 again yeah and that's another big mouthful for a jeet yeah. but they do love those so that's the mantis shrimp number three number two is the magnetic minnow the magnetic minnow originally was devised by a guy called Cliff Rochester in South Africa. This is one of those flies which was tied up specifically for a small grouper pattern. Right. And this one, it was uh, the, the little peacock groupers that yeah. swim around and they okay. do love those to snack on. And what I particularly like about the magnetic minnow is there's a large amount of DNA hollow in this which means it sloughs off water really quickly. So mm -hmm. it doesn't absorb the water, which means when you're casting it, it's quite easy yeah. to cast. Yeah. Um, Again, you've got the black and purple colors, but it's particularly good in bright sunlight because okay. it reflects and yeah. flashes like a and crazy thing. In. Oh, so it's just love yeah. it. So I've caught a lot of fish on those. Actually, there's, a, there's one of these stuck in the mouth of the fish on the front of the Rio GT line right. box on that. So that's, um, that's a, one of my ultimate favorite patterns. You do have to be slightly careful with this one though with the, with the hollow is that it can get wrapped around the hook. So you have to check it every so often to make sure that it hasn't got tail wrapped. But other than that, really good profile on that fly. Very fond of that one. At number one comes in the gym sock. Now the gym sock was one of those flies which was originally developed actually not as a GT fly, but as a okay. rooster fish fly. Yeah. 
um, along the uh, the west coast of the states, uh, Baja, Mexico, and that was developed by a guy called Mike Riser. And Mike was a very serious um, rooster fisherman, and this was one of his patterns. And what makes this one different is you've got a big profile here, but you don't have an awful lot of bulk in the fly, because what he's done is he ties in a, a clump of yarn in the head there. And what that does is splay out the fibers, so you get this really big profile, and you'll be able to see this from the front. Uh, it gives you a big bulky profile on your fly, but it, it's very little material. Yeah. So it doesn't weigh very much, and again, it's easy to cast. Right. And what I tend to do with these sometimes is, depending on where I'm fishing, I take a black marker and I put more bags yeah. on them yeah, too. Yeah. And then uh, on other occasions, they're great just as they are. But that currently, that is my number one GT go-to fly. Whether I'm in the Indian Ocean or whether I'm in the Pacific, that's, that's the one for me. So before Pete steals these and mm -hmm. takes them away to his mm -hmm. favorite destination, mm -hmm. we'd like to offer them to our YouTube fans. Um, if you leave a comment in, uh, down below with why you think you deserve them, we'll pick a winner in a week's time. Are you sure I can't have them? No. <laughs> As always, I hope you found that video useful. Yep. Please like and subscribe to our channel. And please also check out the Fulling Mill channel. You'll find a lot of great uh, patterns tying up uh, over there. And that's, uh, you'll find a subscribe link right here. So please go and check that out and subscribe to their channel. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.